Since the coronavirus reached the United States, many people have pushed the panic button, emptying the store shelves of many Walmarts and Costco of supplies including bottled water, hand sanitizer, disinfecting wipes, and even toilet paper. A lot of people right now that, that over the last couple of weeks have gotten their two-year supply of toilet paper and water and masks. When this is over, they're going to have two years of toilet paper, water, and masks, and maybe that's better than nothing, but there isn't a need for that. Southwest Utah Public Health Department Public Information Officer Dave Heaton said while there is a need for concern, fear of the virus has caused some unnecessary panic. This is no time to panic. The, the current risk of anyone in this room getting coronavirus is very low, and if and when it does reach our community and circulate, most people will still not get COVID-19, and most of those that do, it will be a mild disease and they'll recover just fine. Heaton spoke to the Access and Functional Needs Coalition and gave an update to members of five counties on the latest developments of the virus. Uh, COVID-19 stands for Coronavirus Disease 19 because it was first emerged last year in, in 2019. It was first detected in uh, Wuhan, China. That's a large city in the Hubei province uh, in December. And at first it was just a few extra cases of pneumonia. Members of this coalition came to find out what they can do to be better prepared in taking care of their clients. People who are elderly or children, people with disabilities. And so they are daily on the ground helping and serving people. And in emergencies, people with disabilities are two to four times more likely to be injured or killed because of that disaster. However, the recent panic has caused a shortage of supplies for day-to-day -day operations for many of these caretakers. And it's been hard for us when we do face-to-face um, -face care with patients and we don't have access to masks, we don't have access to hand sanitizer because of the panic that has been caused by other people. And so it's really important to really be involved and aware and get your resources from the right sources. Although there have been thousands of confirmed cases worldwide and even deaths, Heaton said COVID-19 is not widespread enough across the world to be considered a pandemic yet. There are three criteria for something to become a pandemic. One of those is the disease has to cause illness and death. The second is it has to have sustainable person-to-person -person transmission. And the third is it has to spread globally. So, so far COVID-19 has met two of those criteria with the illness and death uh, spreading person to person. It's in 72 countries, but it's not quite global enough to be considered a pandemic. Just like with the SARS outbreak, public health officials are hoping that a change in the weather may tame this virus down. When spring came around in April, SARS disappeared and we haven't seen it reemerge. Re um, we hope that that will be the same with COVID-19. That's a possibility. Right now you don't hear that that prospect talked about in the media. COVID-19 is easily spread from person to person, but it is not airborne. It's only contracted through contact of droplets from an infected person. And a mask is only useful if you are the sick person to protect other people, or you're doing temporary direct patient care. At that point, you take the mask off and you throw it away. Heaton said the best thing for people to do to prevent getting any virus or cold is to wash your hands with soap and water, avoid touching your face, and don't shake other people's hands. And while a vaccine is on the horizon, there is no available treatment to prevent the severe respiratory virus. Test kits are available through a doctor's order. Heaton said symptoms are similar to that of the flu. The typical symptoms of COVID-19 include uh, uh, coughing, fever, shortness of breath, and the you know, complications have been that in some people it gets down deep in the lungs and can cause severe pneumonia. Persons suspected of having it are asked to stay home. And that's just what Sharon Hinson, an advocate for the blind, said she's prepared to do. I'm kind of thinking right now I might stay put and let them come to me. For those people with disabilities, we want to help and encourage them as much as possible to have their plan in place, have a preparedness buddy that will check on them and assist them if needed because the first responders and others who help in emergencies cannot get to everybody. While information so far suggests that most COVID-19 illnesses are mild, people with certain underlying health conditions are at a greater risk, especially for those who have traveled. They've determined that very young people, children, and people over 80 are are not really at high risk if they get the disease of, of, of being a fatality. And so the very young and very old are actually being spared in this situation. That big, large uh, group in between ages 29 up to 79, which includes, uh, I think, most people, um, that's kind of where the fatalities have been spread. 
Businesses in Utah statewide all received letters on how to prepare for this. Many universities, like Dixie State, are already restricting study abroad travel plans if a State Department Level 3 or 4 travel advisory is issued. Currently, those traveling in and out of the United States by air are also facing restrictions. If you are a foreign national and you have been in any of the high-risk countries within the last two weeks, you are not allowed to enter the United States. If you are a United States citizen, you may enter the United States if you've been in one of those high-risk countries in the past two weeks in one of 11 designated airports. As soon as you arrive, you will be uh, screened by public health officials and possibly go into a, a quarantine situation. Now, quarantine is when you are healthy, but you've been exposed and you need to be quarantined or isolated for a period of time until it's determined you're no longer at risk. Isolation in itself is when you're sick and you are isolated from other people um, until you're recovered and, and aren't at risk anymore. And if a person has been infected and they're recovering, they test them for coronavirus as soon as they've had two negative tests in a row, then they're considered low risk and they can return back to their community. Heaton said it's a myth that packages coming from overseas would be contaminated with the virus. If I'm ordering on Amazon, I'm getting packages from China, do I dare open this thing? And even previous testing has showed that um, pathogens don't last that long through the mail. And so if you get a package from China, that's a myth that, that you're in danger, that you're probably just fine receiving any packages or shipments from China. Health officials say if you are having any of the severe symptoms, you may want to contact your health professional. However, just like the flu, the best thing to do is to stay home and shelter in place. For updates on the coronavirus, go to SWUHealth.org. In St. George, Melissa Anderson, Community Education News.